Hi, I'm Faye Ann Devi and I'm an artist and writer and publisher. So the idea of an essay in vibrational poetics came from a rethinking about what a publication can be. Um, I've been working with publications for about a decade now, um, really thinking about how to make texts um, come into the world in different ways, sometimes through traditional books, um, but more and more also through performance or through conversation. So this particular line of work came about from thinking about how restricted forms of publication are. Um, they really subscribe to very normative ideas about vision. Um, as somebody who comes from a position of blindness, um, I'm very interested in other sensorial ways of languaging. Um, so I started to explore what could an essay be. And I like the word essay because it also has the connotations of an experiment. So it's really an experiment with a narrative. This particular essay in Vibrational Poetics is one that experiments with embodied typography. So how could we potentially carry a narrative or story through the body? I think about the ways that Indigenous leaders have carried story over thousands, hundreds of thousands of years through singing, through song, through dance. And I think these are the sorts of forms that we need to look to to be more imaginative in the ways that we're thinking about publication. So this forum on language offered an opportunity uh, to develop a new essay. In this case, it came about through a conversation with Dr Brent Davis, who's a professor here at the University of Melbourne who studies indecipherable scripts. So through conversation, we learnt about the Minoan scripts Linear A and Linear B, uh, which Dr Davis works with. The Minoan languages Linear A and Linear B and an older form of Cretan hieroglyphs were originally discovered uh, in the palace of Knossos, which was an excavation in Crete. And uh, these forms have been the subject of a quest over many years to try and decipher what they mean. Only one of them, Linear B, has been deciphered. This turned out to be a borrowing of the indigenous scripts, the hieroglyphs and Linear A, by the colonising and invading Mycenaean Greeks. So from that we know what the tablets written in Linear B describe, but we also know the sounds of Linear A because Linear B adopted the phonetic sounds of Linear A. And what this means is that even though we can't decipher the meanings of Linear A, we know what it sounds like. So the specific phrase that we're working with for this performance uh, was inscribed around a small ladle, which it's assumed was used to carry some type of offering to a shrine. And the letters that are carved into this ladle phonetically are thought to be Atai Hwaja Osukare Jasasarame Unakanasi Ipinima Sirute. So Benjamin and I first started working together through conversation. We talked about tactility, about intimacy, about how you carry story through bodies. We also talked about different kinds of bodies and different kinds of histories. Um, and that grew into an interest in working together. And uh, I spoke a lot about these ideas that I have that are founded in a radical disability justice framework around how we can have sensorial language and what that could be through the body. Um, Benjamin is a performer who is extremely articulate through his embodied vocabulary. And there we really worked with ideas of uh, fonts, of uh, what it is to actually carry language, what it is to um, move down the stem of a K. Um, we also worked with the ideas of what punctuation brings, the spacing, the breath, these things that are not actually voiced or articulated but are so much the rhythm of, of a phrase. Uh, we worked with content and what that can mean in terms of um, intimacy or distance, um, what it is to allow a personal reading even with a public performance. Um, so in this essay here, we've tried to stick to that kind of structure that we've been developing, but very much honour the different style of typography and language that is the essence of this linear A text.